I know the Four Seasons my whole life, as probably everyone does, and I played the winter of it uh, the first time when I was 11 years or 10 years old. Um, it was my first piece on a whole violin, so not in a quarter or a half or whatever, but it was my very first piece on a whole violin. I was very proud of that. And then later I played the autumn, that was when I was 11, and uh, when I was 13, 14, I played for the first time all four seasons. And when I was 12 also, um, I played the orchestra part. So first violin, first solo violin, second violin, second uh, solo violin, plus viola. I played even once. And uh, my mom was playing harpsichord, so she practiced the harpsichord part at home. So I knew the harpsichord part even very well. The only part I did not know that well was the violoncello and um, yeah so when I was asked to do this recording I felt very comfortable with that piece because I really knew it from any side any possible side and um, I mean my interpretation with that work I'm not trying to do to show people that um, I found the clue I am I really know the very special thing about this piece but I'm just trying to take the audience through a journey about journey about um, the whole four seasons. Uh, Vivaldi wrote four poems to this piece and he when you play it you just have this feeling like what he wrote when they're hunting when it's freezing when it's so hot in summer you just um, yeah, I'm trying to, to take the audience through all these feelings I have um, when I'm playing this piece. And to do it in the National Botanic Garden of Wales, um, I, was, I, was very, I was very pleasant and very happy there. I mean, the whole atmosphere of the recording was wonderful for me with the orchestra, which is one of the best in the world, and the crew and also, yeah, the Botanic Garden of Wales. Um, Though I'm not so keen on nature things like like going out and, and I don't know anything about biology and flowers, um, it is it was a wonderful um, atmosphere there and I really had this feeling like um, yeah being in, being in summer being there with uh, in the nature uh, which is really a very big part of the four seasons itself and um, yeah I felt very happy there and I'm I was just trying to give all my feelings I have into this piece of music. I mean, one challenge is certainly that everyone knows this piece so well. You hear it in, in elevators and in tube stations and anywhere. So it might certainly happen sometimes when you play it that you are not with full attention at the piece because it's not very difficult in technical way, especially not when you play it every year, I don't know, 10 times. Um, so that is one challenge to be always with full attention with that piece. And I love this piece a lot, so I never had this kind of problem. Still, to always to think about something something new that you just don't have your interpretation and you just keep it because you think it's fine. Um, I'm trying to listen to other recordings, to other um, opinions about this piece, and yeah, always trying also to change my interpretation. I'm pretty sure that my interpretation is going to change in the future as well. And uh, the recording was 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 a challenge for me because it was my very first recording. Before I went there, I was very afraid what is going to expect me, and also that it's not only audio but also video. And I came there 
and I just had had absolutely no idea what to do and I just played my pieces my part and the orchestra was really a very big help um, they were very kind we had a wonderful time with the rehearsals and also with playing then and so the recording was not a challenge then at all it was I really enjoyed the whole week though it was very hard work and yeah it was no problem at all my favorite movement is certainly the second movement of winter um, also I play the winter first so the second movement is just my abs absolutely favorite thing and I kept saying um, I kept si singing that piece my whole um, yeah when I was 11 or 12 years old I was terribly in love with one one I don't know guy whatever and I kept uh, singing this piece the whole day because I was so in love and that piece was so wonderful <laughs> so that that movement is certainly my favorite one I'm doing my graduation my a level now in in May 2002 so in June I will finish hopefully <laughs> my school and um, I'm going to attend the music university then as a normal student. Um, during the past 10 years, I was yeah, kind of pre-college, so it's a special status we have here in Germany, um, where I only have violin lessons, but not uh, harmonics and, and earring uh, lessons and piano lessons and these things. So this is going to start in September. But um, anyway, I'm having so many concerts starting this autumn so um, I'm probably going to play something like 60 70 maybe 80 concerts a year f starting the summer until now it were only 40 to 50 concerts be because of school because I I was missing uh, 60 70 percent of my school time but 30 percent I had to be here um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to, to stay in Munich. Um, I will be based in Munich and live here. And I will always try to to stay here, like because I, I really love Munich. I love the city. I will always try to um, to get a bigger repertoire. I mean, my repertoire is not very small. I have played most of the pieces of the. 17th, 18th, 19th, and yeah, 19th century. My 20th century repertoire is still very small, and I'm just trying to to learn pieces. Like last year, I did Prokofiev and Alban Berg. Now I'm doing Shostakovich and Kretschmann, and um, yes, I'm trying to to get a big repertoire there. And also, what I love a lot is chamber music. But as probably any soloist, I do not have so much time. To do it but I'm, I'm really trying to yeah to play quartets and trios whenever I can um, the biggest challenge probably is that that playing concerts stays always something special when you when I go on stage that I s always have this feeling this is something wonderful something uh, extraordinary that 2,000 people go to a hall just to, to listen to my playing. Um, and I, I really want to try to keep that, always. I always wanted to, um, to be a violinist, to play concerts, to make other people happy, to, um, when I play Beethoven concerto, that it's just really the interpretation I always dreamt of. I mean, today I really have problems to go to concerts of other violinists I mean I always go to them but um, I'm never really happy after afterwards because I know I would have played it completely different and um, usually I, I am convinced that, that most of the parts uh, I would do different there are reasons why I would do it um, though I'm very interested in other violinists so I have a lot of CDs of other violinists and um, I go to all concerts I can um, not only of violin, of violinists, but also of pianists and, and conductors and so on. Um, I don't know. I, I never had this this feeling that I don't that I, I don't have the power to go on. I I always wanted to to learn new things, to learn new repertoire. To I always also have to say that my teacher is is really great with that. So 
Also, when I come with a piece I have played 20 times, 30 times, 200 times in a concert, she always, when I go there and I know, she, I, and I think she's not going to tell me anything, I mean, I know this piece so well, what shall she tell me? She always has something to tell, she always has to, she always can, can tell me tell me things that that I never thought of it. And then I come home and I'm just suddenly, why didn't I think of that? And I have so much work to do for the next weeks. And this is why I'm still going to stay with my teacher because she always keeps me going. And certainly David Oistrach, certainly. I heard his recordings the first time when I was three or four years old. And from that time, I bought any recording I could get. And also my second teacher, Lydia Dubrovskaya, um, was from Moscow. And so she had this kind of um, relationship with him whatever and so I always tried to be such an honest musician as David Oyster was. Second person is certainly Yeri Menohin not only because I, I won his competition I, I know him uh, I knew him um, but also because my teacher now Anna Timochenko is his pupil um, and he was not only a violinist which makes him so sh special but he was um, he was a violinist, he was a humanist, he was uh, one of the greatest personalities in the 20th century. Um, so he certainly belongs to my idols as well. I have to say that Anna Sophie Mutter was, was really my idol for many, many years because she, she is the greatest German violinist we have. And um, also today, I, I have almost any recording she has done. Um, because she is really one of the persons who always thinks about music. You can say you like her interpretation or you can say you don't like it, but um, you never have the feeling that she just went on stage saying, I know everything I'm playing and she went away. Uh, that's never the, way, ne the thing with her. She is really also a very honest musician and I admire her for that a lot. You may have a, never have a goal which you can reach because the moment you reach it, you have to look for the next one. Um, so I I will always go for for a perfect interpretation which does not not exist. And I never have this kind of of idea in my head. Uh, I want to play in Carnegie Hall. I want to play with Berlin Philharmonic because one day I'm going to reach it. Then then what I, what am I going to do then? So. Um, also, I don't have this kind of career thing in my mind. Um, being famous or being uh, traveling around the world, that was never important to me. What is important to me is when I go on stage, no matter if it's a huge day, stage or not, if it's uh, in a little village in France or in New York City, um, I'm trying to do my very best on stage. And I'm trying to make the people that came to the concert to make them happy um, and that is everything I want to do and yeah to learn new works also to go to contemporary music now and um, yeah that's that's what I want to do it's I will never have this kind of idea to to m have a great career and that's what I want to do because when I reach it if I reach it whatever um, what am I going to do then so I'm not thinking about these things Colours are nice, it's all gold and lime greens and very pretty. It's the prettiest season, I think that's probably why I like it. And I can get out my bike. Well, you're looking forward, you, everything's coming together, you know, and waking up after a miserable winter, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the sun, isn't it? It's as long as the sun shines out. Almost rebirth, really, um, a, a newness, a freshness, um, vitality. Scents, various scents that come to mind, you know. Um, visual stimulation you know especially after you've had a long winter and everything just dies and suddenly you know you have all these different images and really the world does transpire I mean, uh, uh, transform itself when suddenly it starts waking up the first movement is kind of a song of birds 
and there's some water then between and there's also a little storm but uh, the most beautiful thing is actually the, the singing of the birds in this mov movement which we really uh, made three violins playing together when it really sounds absolutely amazing. Well, I could see like, flowers opening and um, birds picking up little twigs to get the nest, the stuff for the nest, and rushing around to put them in the trees, and the little bunnies running, hopping around. And, oh, I could tell you a million things. All the signs of that which seems to be dead spring into new life. Uh, and uh, that's to me what spring means. It suddenly it looks as though it's all gone, it's finished, but there's this new life. And I believe that in this life and in the life to come, this new life. So that, that's why I think it's lovely. And second movement, um, the first viola player is the dog. And um, yeah, it's, it's very funny to, to play actually it's this very beautiful movement because I have a wonderful melody, which is a song of a shepherd boy. And um, it's like a dream patient. Uh, to the first viola is playing then the stock um, and it's, it's really very beautiful. I think um, spring is beautiful because you've got the birds and you've got the new life. I think probably that's the thing that would strike me, new life. You know the grass is new and tall and the wild flowers all, all come up all at once and it's just beautiful. <laughs> and the third movement is the dancing of just in a village like a dancing uh, party or so yeah nature's showing us again that life is about again the spring the small plants the big plants and the, the animals appear birds seem to make more of a song and stuff than they do than before you know I, I, I think spring for me is the one because it's sunny <laughs> and it's light, um, nice long evenings, warm, that's it really? Um, warm! Yeah, well hopefully it's warm. <laughs> uh, the, um, all the flowers are out and trees and so on, it's just a much better time of year. I think people feel better when it's warmer and everything's growing, it looks nice. Mm. Warmness, but it's never warm wherever I am. It's <laughs> no, I don't know why, but um, well, at home, I'm in Munich, um, sometimes it's, it's pretty hot, but usually in June. And in June we have still school, so actually you cannot enjoy the time. And in August it's also already getting colder. So I always hope for warmness, but there is no none. And um, when I'm on the road, and usually, for example, in Chicago, everyone is telling me that it's so hot, so warm, and the moment I come there, it's getting colder. So I'm really a very unlucky person in the summer. <laughs> I love the beach. And the boys. <laughs> Just everything's at the zenith, you know, and um, it, everything's building up to that point, and everything after that will be a decline until we come back again. So, for me, summer is the is the key season. Vivaldi describes it um, actually strange because only the f in the first movement where there are a few sections. Um, where he describes this warmness and everyone is very tired of it um, but most of the time he's just, just describing a storm of, of summer so the whole third movement is storm uh, section of the first movement is storm and in the second movement there's also always storm coming everyone's happy everyone's pleased to talk to you sun brings out the best in everything summer's good <laughs> love it, absolutely love it, nice fresh walks in the country, the, cr the crunch of the leaves under your feet, it's lovely, the smell of people burning the leaves off the grass, it's lovely. I like the colours, so for me autumn is all sort of yellows, browns and all that, yeah. I think it's a, a, a period in which one suddenly feels one can leap to one's feet and do things again after the languor <laughs> of the summer, how if he was able to do anything. It's a dancing and they're celebrating the harvest and um, there are also a few drunk people there 
and uh, the first cello and we'll be playing the drunk section and it's always a lot of fun to do this and uh, it's very complicated because we, you have to play very free because when you're drunk you don't be you're not in rhythm so uh, cello and uh, principal violin they have to find a way to be free but to be together as well and um, that's the first movement then this drunk person falls asleep and uh, that's the second movement actually all drunk people are sleeping yeah the ice is sort of like um uh, everything sort of um coming to its end in a way but it's getting ready for the next generation plus all those leaves that fall on the floor they all rot down to make you know what i mean the food and nourishment for you know the plants and the rest of it so to speak so so it's all going back into itself it's like revolving cycles i love the colors the oranges and the end of the summer i like the change of the season what Jeff, actually likes rain? I love the rain. Like if you're looking at a painting than anything else. You know, a lot of people might like summer because they go swimming, it's hot, but I don't. I like autumn because all the colours are there in the autumn. Amber and red and gold and, and a calmness that I like. The third movement is a wild hunt and uh, it's just a story about this, how an animal is hunted and then shoot in the end and dies. Yeah, poor animal. Relaxing, yeah. You've been through a, a year, you're coming to the end of the year. You can look back and see what you've done. Yeah, you know, it's very cool. Just lovely. Take all those memories with you into the cold winters. <laughs> I like the, uh, the hibernation of winter. Um, Skiing, the cold, the, the food, and the warm fires, and that sort of thing. What you can really appreciate also in winter is structures of plants, structures of grasses in the in the winter if they haven't been cut down, the structure of herbaceous plants, of trees, of the spider's webs on it. Frost on plants is fantastic in winter and that really gives it a lot of drama. Uh, the outdoors is great but it's also an excuse to stay indoors in winter so you can snuggle up. So. It's very cold and everyone is just, yeah, freezing and uh, there are also some storms in it and um, in the second movement it's um, actually you're sitting inside at a warm uh, fire and hearing some stories and uh, outside the rain, you can hear the rain, it's a piticata of the violins and uh, the third movement is ice skating. Um, you start ice skating and then you're so afraid to fall down that in the end you do f fall down and um, then there's again the, the warm wind coming followed by a great storm in the end of the movement and of the whole piece. I have a kayak and I go surf canoeing and winter is definitely the best time for waves and for canoeing you see so even if you're not very cold and you get off the water it's nice. Yeah. Silhouettes of the trees the muted colours and then the bright colours as they come into spring. <laughs>